Hello students, hello viewers, welcome to this video. And uh, in this video, I'm going to do something very different. Uh, this video is, uh, I mean, I'm not going to pronounce any uh, word in this uh, video. We're not going to look at the pronunciation of a word, but uh, I'm going to talk about uh, <clears throat> uh, the visit, uh, my visit to the uh, book fair in Chennai. And uh, I'm not going to talk about the book fair, uh, you know, in, in, uh, um, in detail, but actually I'm going to show you the books uh, that I bought. And uh, well, the context is this, the context of making this, uh, this video is this, uh, that, you know, I was talking about to my, uh, to the, to the students of literature, um, to my students about, you know, starting a collection of books. And I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, you as well as the students, as well as the viewers, uh, how you can, you know, go about it. Of course, there is no, there are no hard and fast rules on how you start a collection of books or how you start, a, a, you know, your library and how you maintain that library and how you, you know, add books to that library. But uh, there is no, there are no hard and fast rules. But the point is, I'll just show you what I've done and I'll give you my logic or my uh, justification for uh, buying these books. And uh, then we'll, maybe if, if, if whatever I say helps you in buying uh, books then and in improving our collection, in starting your collection or in improving your collection, uh, then you know uh, I'm sure this uh, this video would have done its job. So let us start with uh, the first book that I I mean I won't say the first book. Uh, the, the there are certain facts that I want to make clear before we begin. One is that uh, this is today is the last day of uh, today 21st of Jan is the last day of uh, the book fair. So uh, the reason why I'm going on the last day was because uh, I had taken a short holiday. I mean I had gone on for a short trip to. Ahmedabad. Not a short, actually, even a week's trip to Ahmedabad, uh, and uh, and of course the Statue of Unity. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, about that later. So uh, let me start off uh, by introducing you to the books. I mean, I'm 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 dipping into the uh, into the bag uh, which was in which I you know I I've collected all these books, bought all these books, and you know uh, I just came back and you know had a cup of tea and I wanted to have a chat with you about this. Uh, about the books that I bought. So let's let's start with uh, with the first book that you know. The first book that I'm going to show you is this. Uh, is this? Okay, I hope you're able to see the. Yeah, this is Roth Unbound, a, a writer and his books uh, by Claudia Roth Pierpont. Okay, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation correct. And this is about Philip Roth, uh, who has written. Uh, I mean, people who. You, I don't have to introduce Philip Roth to you. Okay, so take a good look at this book. Uh, at this book, and I got this for, you know, as uh, forgive the, the the noise that I'm making. Uh, I think I got this book for hundred rupees. So I went to the book fair and I started searching books, uh, or I started searching for stalls and for shops where they they had this, you know, this um, discount going on. You can pick three books for uh, two hundred or five books for for four hundred and and so on. And I picked this up. This is, uh, you know, any book you pick, it will be 100 rupees. And, and they had this. And there was one more book on Jimmy Connors. Uh, Jimmy Connors, if you remember, uh, was one of the stars of the of the 1970s and 80s. Uh, he was a, a professional tennis uh, tennis player. And uh, I don't know, people of my father's vintage would know. I mean, those who were born in the 40s and 50s uh, would be a great fan of Jimmy Connors. Just as they would be a great uh, fan of G.R. Vishwanath, I mean, of uh, you know, batsman Vishwanath, uh, because he was, uh, again, uh, you know, one of the favorites of, of my father's uh, generation. Vishwanath in cricket and Jimmy Connors in uh, in tennis. Of course, the Amritaraj brothers and uh, and uh, our own tennis Krishnan uh, also featured in their list of uh, in their list of celebrities. But this is one book and, and this is pretty good for 100 rupees. This is a steal. Okay, so Roth Unbound, and I just want to find out if Claudia Roth Pierpont is, you know, is uh, is related to uh, Philip Roth. So yeah, so this is uh, yeah, so this is about uh, Philip Roth, and let us go to the. I hope I'm getting my pronunciation right because I've not checked the pronunciation of these proper names before I made this video, or probably I should. Yeah, so let's see. Forgive me, forgive my pronunciation, forgive. Uh, uh, the mistakes that I make in the pronunciation of proper nouns because when it comes to proper nouns, you'll have to pronounce it the way the person wants you to pronounce, wants that person to be called. So proper noun pronunciation is a huge problem. Okay. So I mean, not a huge problem. You just check and then you check with the person and then, you know, 
and then uh, pronounce that uh, that uh, that particular person's name and be careful with names because you know people mistake you if if if, if i call someone with the wrong pronunciation it can lead to very bad relations especially in the first two or three meetings so so that is wrath for you let me keep it here yeah and uh, the next one yeah so that is fred truman i i first thought this was a this was a uh, you know a, a biography i'm interested in biographies by the way this is my present interest okay my current interest uh, and then i realized that this is uh, i mean i thought it was truman the uh, the president truman um it was also called fred truman if i'm right but this is fred truman the cricketer so and uh, so this starts off uh, i won't say starts off but this adds to my collection of uh, cricket books i already have the uh, the autobiography of uh, of sunil gavaskar sunny side up of uh, zahir abbas which is titled z z e d and uh, and uh, who's that person yeah and graham gooch uh, yeah yes out of the wilderness if i'm right not sure if it's graham gooch or uh, the one who went to south africa to play the rebel series but anyway so that that this adds to my uh, cricketing collection on i mean this is the book on fred truman and if i'm right uh, wait this is yeah so this is not a autobiography this is a biography of fred truman all right so uh, talking about cricket let me come to one of uh, again uh, a very uh, person whom i admired in the 90s sanjay manjrekar uh, this is sanjay manjrekar's autobiography and uh, well i i i was waiting for you know an opportunity to buy this uh, this book uh, of course again i got this for 100 rupees so sorry manjrekar if you if you see this video please forgive me i was waiting for a cheaper i mean not a cheaper version i was waiting for a uh, you know for it to land in some second hand collection or in some discount uh, sale like this uh, and i'm waiting for uh, you know the the sultan uh, by uh, wasim akram it's 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 priced around 400 now the moment it comes to around 100 150 i'll be buying it yeah so that is those are the two uh, sporting books i mean books on sports people uh, and uh, let us go on to the next one this is this is an interesting one uh by uh, john uh, hanna edelstein it's called himglish females and uh, well what is what is great about this is this i i bought the logic is that uh, anything about language for example uh, there is one on indian english i forget the title of the book uh, there is one on indian english and uh, well i have not read the book yet uh, sorry about that but anyway this adds to that collection okay and of course uh, eats shoots and leaves i have that book also uh, and you know the well this adds to the uh, what i would say is any anybody who is interested in the practical uh or the social side or the sociological side of english the practical sociological side of english how english is spoken how women speak and how men speak the differences are highlighted in this uh, in this book so usually before buying a book i look at the title i look at the uh, you know the the uh, the summary behind and then you know uh, that's how uh, it goes so that's the fourth book that I have that we have seen there's one thing and this is again very 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 i i'm very very interested Uh, in in uh, european history and in uh, in in holocaust literature of course i don't claim to be an expert and you know holocaust is one of uh, you know one of the uh, things that that affected me a lot as a teenager i could not digest the fact that uh, you know a human being could cause so much pain to another human being based on someone's community or or uh, belief or faith so but then uh, hitler was not the only person who did that uh, during the uh 19th and 20th centuries in the 20th century so uh, let's talk about that later you know my my historical my readings in history i'll talk about uh, that later so this is a book uh it's it's on dönitz the last it's called dönitz the last furor by peter patfield and uh, what this talks about is after actually the nazis were facing defeat and we always say the nazis because the german army listen to hitler was under the command of hitler and the under the command of hitler but he did one thing he maintained the nazi uh, his nazi um, followers in a separate unit so not every german army any every person who served in the german army in the in the deutsche wehrmacht 
uh, was an Nazi. So that's how we have to uh, look at, uh, you know, that's how we have to differentiate and we have to, that's the fine grained difference between a, you know, a, a German soldier and a Nazi. So this person, Donitz, uh, was a Nazi and he was sent to 10 years in prison uh, I mean, after the Nuremberg uh, trials took place. So that's, it, this adds to my, you know, my European history collection and uh, yeah, I don't know how much I have in that in that category, but well. So it all started with, I'll tell you uh, which with which book I, I started reading on. Uh, I remember I read one book which I found in Max Muller at that time. Uh, I forget the name of the author, um, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's all right. Uh, so one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I've talked about five books. Wait. Yes, about five books. And let's go on to the sixth book. Now, this is going to be interesting. Uh, this is, I just picked this up. Uh, because if someone talks about, uh, you know, I, I, I'm interested in, you know, a person's life. Maybe because I'm turning 50 or I'm, I'm approaching 50 or I'm, uh, you know, I'm in that, uh, I won't say midlife crisis or anything like that. But I have this, uh, this, I ask this question to myself. You, I put in 20, 25 years of service as a, as a teacher. Uh, serving in a college, why is it that I'm not able to write about my experiences in a, in a readable manner? And maybe I'll get some clue from this, uh, from such books. So this is by, this is Lawrence von der Post, and he is uh, he's a novelist, a philosopher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he what he he's uh, talking about here is about Bushmen and Africa. And it's always good that we we talk about other people, we uh, read about other people, about other cultures. Uh, especially those cultures which have still preserved their their uh, which are close to their roots, uh, which have modernized themselves and not yet forgotten their roots. So, you know, some I, I found this to be very interesting, and well, uh, I bought this. So there you are. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. That's the sixth book that we're talking about. All right. So six, and then this is the. Let me introduce this person to you. In fact, even the uh, stall owner was the person sitting in the and the counter. The stall counter was very, very interested in knowing why did I buy this book. I said, look, this book I bought. Again, all these books are in the 100, 120 range. You pick a book, it will be for 100 or 120, max 130. So I'm not going beyond that. This is Neil Ferguson. And let me introduce, and he's talking about virtual history. Okay. And he, I got introduced to him because I was teaching a paper. Um, in fact, I, I am teaching a paper called, uh, uh, you know, Background to English Literature, in which we talk about World War, World Wars One and Two. Mainly, the impact of World World Wars One and Two on the European, uh, on European culture, society, literature, etc. The point is, I got introduced to Neil Ferguson, and I wanted to show you who this this person is. For those in in Europe, people would know who, who Neil Ferguson is, uh, and I found his. Uh, yeah, because people usually listen to self-help books. And, uh, well, uh, just a minute, Neil Ferguson lectures. Let me, uh, yeah, we are in one second. Let me share screen with you so that you know who, who Neil Ferguson is. All right. And there's one more person, another historical, I mean, uh, another history, uh, professor of history whom I find very interesting. Again, I forget his name. I bought a book on uh, Russian history written by this professor. And... Uh, in fact, it's on uh, the particular on the Bolshevik Revolution. That's another uh, topic which I'm which I'm which I'm very very keen to learn about. You know, the Bolshevik Revolution, what happened, and uh, I mean, uh, what really, how did it change or affect the the Russian society? So we'll talk about that later. Yeah, about my interests in in Holocaust literature and in uh, in in Russia. We'll talk about that later. You know, okay. So that it will be. Uh, but I just wanted to share screen with you. Uh, there you are, share. So that's Neil Ferguson for you. All right. So that's that. That's Neil Ferguson. So, and and uh, just put Neil Ferguson, and he's he's given an interview to our our own uh, television here today. You can check that. Uh, that's that's the latest. Okay. And uh, he talks very in in very uh, clear terms about why the why history is shaping. Or current, how current events shape history and why certain things are happening the way they are. 
why you know for example why is there a war in ukraine and he gives a very uh, solid reasoning for it so that's neat ferguson for you all right and well, this was a steal again because they got it for 130 rupees so that uh, you know that's just one one set of books seven or eight seven maybe yeah then let's go on to the next set of books there we have we have this and this is one person whom i admire a lot and uh, I find this person again and again very fascinating for my research, for my PhD, uh, for my, uh, you know, for my reading. A man who knew too much, Alan Turing and the Invention of the Computer by David Leavitt. I've seen the imitation game multiple times, uh, at least seven or eight times. And I still find it, whenever I see it again, I find it very, you know, uh, I find it very refreshing. I know a person who, and I let, let me tell you a very, uh, you know, I have a, you know, a problem, I'm not a problem exactly, but I would like, if, if Alan Turing were alive, if I could meet Alan Turing, I would ask him why he fired the linguists in Bletchley Park. You see, you find that scene in, in, in the imitation game. And uh, I, I also read his paper on, uh, read not, not, I have not taken, uh, you know, any detailed notes, but yes, I've read his paper on, uh, on the Turing machine. And there's one point where he says, look, when you buy something or when you when you have something let's assume you have a machine you can only ex the scope of of your expectation should be confined to the scope of that machine you can't expect a machine to dance and i found it very i mean using a machine as a metaphor alan turing has given a, a great philosophy for life i mean you can't expect a two wheeler to run as i mean go as as fast as a rocket that's what i thought that's the first uh, example that i got Please read that uh, uh, paper by uh, Alan Turing. I'll give you the uh, title of the paper. It's called, uh, the paper is entitled uh, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. And it starts with a very, uh, I won't say very provocative, but thought-provoking question. Can machines think? You know, he, the, their entire uh, paper is about that. So that's, that's Alan Turing uh, for you. All right. And, uh, and please watch the invitation game. And then I came across something, of course, this was pointed to by my wife. And she said, look, I, I'm sure you don't want to miss out on this. And I didn't want to miss out on this. So I got this complete, uh, just a minute. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't judge me on this. But he's again, very, we have Clarkson's, I have Clarkson's collect, uh, collection. And I, I, I strongly recommend uh, the Amazon series Clarkson's Farm. I, I admire him for the way he goes about uh, you know, making presentations. <clears throat> and uh, some of my ideal or my uh, what I thought would be a, a good role model, my role models in presentation were all Brits, were all British presenters. Um, again, we'll talk about that later. You know, there's a huge list. And Clarkson is one of them. Another person whom I admire for the manner in which he presents is, is of course, Stephen Fry. Can we we'll talk about uh, that person later? Stephen Fry later. So that's one. Okay, that's uh, Don't Stop Me Now by Clarkson. One. Uh, the World According to Clarkson. Two. For Crying Out Loud. Three. The World According to, uh, according to uh, Clarkson, wait. I think this is volume one. Yeah, no, this is volume five. The World According to Clarkson, volume five. And Jeremy Clarkson, Born to be Riled. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> All right, so anyway. Please don't judge me on this one. Well, I really, I have a, a the biography of Miranda Hart and uh, uh, the moon is a balloon um, by about that famous actor who comes in Guns of Navarro. Yeah, not sure. Okay. Then uh, speaking of biographies, I have this with me. Again, a person whom I admire. Just for the knowledge of his Hindi and Sanskrit, Karan Singh and uh, well, uh, by the way, he's the he's the son of Maharaja Hari Singh, the the king of Kashmir, the Maharaja of Kashmir. Uh, 
Bhatia, who was the Maharaja in 1947-48. He's the son of, uh, and of course, he famously, I mean, he, of course, he came into national prominence uh, for, for many reasons. And of course, uh, he was the one who, uh, you know, opposed, or sorry, not opposed exactly, but uh, uh, went uh, for, a, for a direct uh, fight with uh, Vajpayee Ji in the 19... 96 or 98 elections, I forget. In Lucknow. In Lucknow. Then this is okay. So that's uh, let's I mean let's go to the next book, The Song Lines by Bruce Chatwin. And this is about uh, uh if I'm right, this is about uh, the 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 aboriginals of uh, of Australia. Again, I'm interested in, in you know thanks to my I mean not thanks to my research exactly, but since I'm researching on pronunciation and on how phonemes and the speech sounds of uh, each language, uh, you know, came to be, or came to be, uh, came to or generated or became part of 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 every language, my I have a very simple or I have a very, uh, I mean, I'm puzzled by this fact as to why certain languages or why Tamil, my mother tongue, why has it chosen only a particular list of sounds and not other sounds. There are so many other, other speech sounds. Why hasn't it chosen that? And this question, it will take you back to almost to human migrations. So you will have to read literature related to almost 100,000 years of human history, of human migration. Either it will be a, a climate, a, any migration that has happened in human history in the past 100,000 years. I, I'm giving 100,000 as, as, as a ballpark figure. Would have happened either due to climate change or due to some cataclysmic uh, event like a volcano uh, bursting or like a volcano uh, erupting, or it would have been due to, you know, I mean, these are the two main reasons, or it would have been, or it, what, I mean, the third reason is we have a natural tendency to migrate. You cannot stop migration. So people will go seeking greener pastures or what they think as greener pastures. And once one particular individual goes, like for example, New Zealand was uh, settled uh, some 800 years ago uh, by Maori people. The Maoris are Polynesian people who came, who discovered New Zealand. And the first person who went was in search of something. So that is how that first person, that first uh, Maori went, Maori man went and found or uh, discovered uh, New Zealand. So uh, that is how things are. And I wanted to, these are, uh, this is about, uh, and it's particularly called song lines because uh, the aborigines of Australia believed that you know everything was uh, was created by uh, you know by songs. I mean, as far as I know. So that's that. And then I have one more book here. No, sorry, two more books here. One and two. One is of course, you know, uh, a comment about. What I mean about what is going on in this pre-garden, uh, pre-kindergarten phase, and this is quite uh, thought-provoking. I mean, the way the manner in which, when I read the back cover, I I realized that this has to do something with curriculum, and I'm interested in that too, because I did my CT and DT in EFLU, and I'm very interested in that as to how curriculum affects, you know, the syllabus and how the syllabus affects the class, the lesson, and the, how the lesson affects, you know. The classroom and then the final book that i'm going to show you is ken foley the man from saint petersburg ken foley has been uh, one of my favorite uh, authors uh, lie down with the lions was the first book that i read when i was 17 and uh, so that that uh, that uh, just about completes it so uh, so that let me rewind and show you what i've got so that's book one book two book three three books Four, five, sorry, five, six, seven, eight, wait, eight, nine. Sorry, I'm showing you the back covers. 10, wait for it now, huh? 10, 11, 12 and 13, 
Oh, 13 is not mine. This is my daughter's collection and uh, you can ask her. 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, perfect. And then the Clarkson collection. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And five books of Clarkson. So I'll just show it to you as a bunch so that, you know, we don't waste much of, yeah. So, so you see, again and again, I'm digging into this. That's the Clarkson collection. So 12 plus 5, we have 17 books. And I think the total budget comes to around, around 1,500, 2,000. So not much. So this is the manner in which you can start a collection. One thing, before you... Uh, you know, you're going for a book, always have the Amazon app op open. And if the, if, and what I found was, except for, of course, I, all this, I got, the, got this in discount uh, stalls. And what I feel is, and I'm, I'm sorry to, to, to say this, I'm of course speaking from the point of view of a, uh, of a, of a buyer, of a book buyer. Yeah. Uh, so what is happening is, uh, that these guys are offering discounts fine 10 to 15 percent 10 percent is the usual norm if you put some pressure and if you say you are from a college probably 15 percent even that is does not is not able to beat the amazon prices or the amazon flipkart prices online stores are able to offer a better discount and in fact i whatever i put in my wish list i don't want to show you my wish list because that's that's huge it's a lengthy wish list <clears throat> but what i saw was or what i uh, felt was that these bookstores could have offered more, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, discounts. And if you see, I just share the screen with you. I saw one book called uh, Oppenheimer. Um, and if you show, I mean, sorry, if you, uh, sorry, not show, uh, if you see, um, let me share screen with you so that. Uh, Just a minute. Huh? Um, yeah, so I'm sharing screen with you. So this was priced at around $8.99. But uh, if you notice here, open American Prometheus, the triumph and tragedy of J. Oppenheimer. And if you notice here, it's so I added this to my wish list. I've added this to my wish list, and I know that the, the prices will go down. So your regular uh, first-hand book dealers, those who deal with new books, I'm sorry to say, this is, as a, as a buyer, I find this uh, a bit strange and a bit, uh, they can offer it the same price as Amazon or maybe a 50 rupee more so that they don't get into a loss. But uh, that doesn't seem to be the, the case at all. In fact, when we checked uh, with, uh, with one book uh, seller, uh, the difference between the Amazon price and the online price and the the price at which uh, this person was offering was almost 350 rupees. So the logic is simple. Go for the discount books. Look at your collection. What do you want to collect? Initially, if you have no idea, just go ahead and buy books. I mean, uh, buy the cheapest that are available. Yeah. And that should, uh, you know, I bought, in fact, two books for 20 rupees each. They were available just outside the book fair. So let's wait for next year's book fair. Let's see if this uh, video has an impact on the booksellers but i understand that public publishing and book selling is a is a is a it's very hard work the the margins are not very much they are wafer thin margins i understand that but guys come on please consider this fact that you know people like me who are lovers of books they can buy more books if you offer them at the same price or maybe a bit more or less less would be great yeah and also i i, I want one i want to make one more suggestion See, when Bapasi is, that is B-A-P-A-S-I, Bapasi is, uh, you know, organizing this, let them not wait for me to come uh, on, the, on the 21st, on the last day of the book fair, which is today. Why don't you have an online uh, ordering mechanism? Uh, you can have couriers coming and delivering uh, this to us, or you could use something like Dunzo or some, uh, you can um, partner with some person who is offering uh, logistics and, uh, you know, deliver the uh, books uh, uh, books to our home and then we'll come and you know visit because uh, book fair you know you you, do, you just don't go there to buy books and books just books in fact we had a we had a good lunch we had dosa we had veg fried rice 
and then we went on to drink goli soda and uh, you know and goli soda really reminded me of my school i mean of my, of my college days when i used to walk all the way from vivekananda college to mailapur and have the paneer soda which was around 2 rupees at that time coca cola was 3 rupees 3 or 4 i'm, I'm not sure i'm talking about 1994 93 94 okay so that was uh, there was a lot of uh, you know memories that i shared with you and of course i hope i have given you some uh, uh, sort of you know uh, standard operating procedure for buying your collection only thing is just go and buy keep your budget uh, decide what you are going to spend and you know either g pay use g pay you phone pay use paytm or give cash and you know start uh, you know start your collection so that's it uh, for now i promise that you know i'll do those book reviews as soon as possible i'm sorry i was busy with uh, you know all these courses that i was offering but that's not an excuse at all so i'm back from uh, this semester is you know running uh, fine it's, it's going on fine let's see what happens in the next few days okay and i'll start putting those uh, putting up those videos um of the individual pronunciation of the pronunciation of individual words okay so that's it students and viewers goodbye take care and let's wait for the next uh, book fair and see if uh, i know if there are any changes made or changes done uh, when we meet next year which will be of course jan 2025 goodbye till then bye and please don't forget uh, you know to to view the video of course i'm i'm not i'm not i've disabled comments but that's fine you know my number you can always send feedback to that number bye